Tom Hartman here on the best of the rest of science and green news. You need to know this. We are running out of time to save our oceans. According to a new comprehensive assessment by the United Nations, human impacts on the sea are no longer minor in relation to the overall scale of the ocean. In other words, climate change, pollution, overfishing, and other human-caused activities have left our oceans in a dire state, and we don't have much time left to prevent more widespread destruction. The 55-chapter report, called the World Ocean Assessment, was presented last week to a United Nations working group, and it calls for bold action to save our oceans. The team of experts who completed the assessment looked at a variety of issues to determine how each affects oceanic ecosystems and marine biodiversity, from climate change to ocean acidification to offshore drilling to industrial runoff, our oceans are under serious threat. And without our oceans, life as we know it on land would quickly disappear also. Ocean currents have an enormous effect on our weather and climate, and more than 3.5 billion people depend on our seas for income, energy, and food. Last year, the UN General Assembly adopted a resolution to draft a legally binding international treaty to protect our oceans, and this latest report explains what we need to do to save our seas. Unsurprisingly, it can be summed up by saying that we need better international management of all human activities that affect the oceans. But we can find ways to benefit from making those necessary changes. John Tanzer, director of the Global Marine Program at World Wildlife Fund, said that the way we undertake such action can even provide new opportunities for businesses, communities, and governments to work together. We have the ability to save the oceans and even create jobs in the process. We can't survive long without our oceans, but saving them could help us shape a better future for all. It isn't every day that a discovery changes our understanding of history, but one such discovery has just been made. Last week, scientists announced the discovery of a never-before-known extinct human species, but they haven't yet figured out how it fits into our evolutionary past. Our newest relative had hands and feet nearly the, feet nearly the size of our own, but their brains were only about the size of an orange. And while they may be the most primitive human speci species unearthed yet, they were already advanced enough to perform ritual burials of their dead. The new species has been named Homo naledi, but some scientists aren't yet convinced that the fossils are hominid at all. No matter what you call them, this discovery changes much of what we know about our early ancestors and shows that we still have much more to learn. Scientists say that there's a ticking time bomb hidden beneath two of our Great Lakes. The 62-year-old oil pipelines that run beneath Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, known as the Embridge Pipelines, could cause a massive spill into one of our nation's most important water sources. Last month, the news agency Motherboard started an investigation into those pipelines and found if just one of the pipelines ruptured, it could result in a spill of 1.4 million gallons of oil. And that's if Embridge, the company that owns them, is able to fix the pipeline immediately. Our nation has a pretty bad history when it comes to stopping oil leaks, and the company that runs these pipelines has a track record that's even worse. They're responsible for more than 800 spills between 1999 and 2012, including 800,000 gallons that spilled into the Kalamazoo River in Michigan. Yet somehow they're still allowed to operate a half-century-old set of pipelines beneath our Great Lakes. No company should be allowed to do business in this country if they can't do so safely. And a risk this great requires our government to intervene. It's time to stop using outdated energy and the outdated pipelines that pose an immediate threat. It turns out that service with a smile doesn't benefit customers or employees, and forcing workers to fake happiness actually takes a toll on their health. According to the organizational psychologist Alicia Grandy, forcing employees to stay smiling is sort of an invisible for, for of work, uh, form of work. She explained that so-called emotional labor has a real cost and added, we really want management to think about this. If this is really important for you as a company, if you value it, then you should train for it and compensate for it. And you should create an environment that is supportive for the employee. She came to that conclusion after working on a review paper with her colleagues, which went through decades of research about the costs and benefits of emotional labor. They found that maintaining false happiness is extremely challenging, and it leads to emotional exhaustion and employee burnout. And not one of the studies that they reviewed found that bigger smiles translated into higher sales or repeat customers. If you want employees to seem happy, 
give them the pay and working environment that makes them happy. Forcing workers to smile no matter what doesn't benefit anyone. And finally, Sarah Palin wants to be Donald Trump's energy secretary. And it could be a blessing in disguise. In a recent interview with CNN's Jake Tapper, the half-term Alaska governor, said that if Trump asked her to be a part of his hypothetical cabinet, she'd choose to decide our nation's oil policy. She said, I think a lot about the Department of Energy because energy is my baby. She added, if I were in charge of that, it would be a short-term job, but it would be really great to have someone who knows energy and is pro-responsible development to be in charge, end of quote. No word on whether uh, she would serve for half of Trump's term or whether she would be issuing each of us an oil profit sharing check like she did in Alaska. And that's the way it is for the week of September 14th, 2015. I'm Tom Hartman on Science and Green News.